So as a little extra for channel members, we're going to have a little further look into the 9 demo by LFT to see if we can guess what the reference to 9 really is. Let's whiz past this opening part of the demo. We'll go back into the part where there's apparently, but not really, nine sprites in the top border. And we'll have a little further look at this. So I'm using the warp capability of this emulator to whiz past all of these parts here. The previous video was going through all of these bits in a little bit of detail. And there we go. So the sprites are up in the top border. So I don't know if you notice, but we have a look at the, uh, the Y expansion, where it starts, and also the Y position for some of the sprites. So the Y position for some of the sprites seems to be using a Y position of nine. And as we move the raster targeting cursor down from the top of the screen, and we look at where uh, the Y expansion bit is uh, enabled and disabled. So when you're setting or unsetting the Y expansion bit, unsetting is actually really more important, but the bits need to be set up for the Y expansion. If you unset the Y sprite Y expansion bit at the right cycle on uh, a raster line, then you get the Vic chip confused about what um, what memory pointer or offset rather it should be using for the sprite data. Now these sprites start at or have been told to start at Y position nine, but their Y expansion bits are also set. So if we move off now onto raster line uh, C, which is in decimal, it's 12, and then we move over to the right hand side, we can see that this store A with D017 instruction is coming up. Now MC base is normally the um, memory address offset, if you like, for the sprite data that it's currently fetching for its draw and uh, MC is usually MC base plus three modulus 64. But basically this means that the uh, pointer offset for the sprite data starts at zero and then it adds three each raster line and then it finishes at three F and then that tells the sprite hardware to finish drawing. But if you unexpand expanded sprites in the Y uh, on cycle 15, when the VIC chip is doing all of this MC, MC base logic, it gets really confused. And MC base and MC now contain values which are not divisible by three. And it does this for sprites, which have been told to start at Y position nine, which is kind of interesting in itself. Now look what happens to MC base and MC now. You see, we should be getting six and nine, right? But we we advance the cycle because we've just gone backwards again, but there we go. Now the cycle right has completed and we can see that MC and MC base now are wrong. They're not divisible by three. So it does this exactly on cycle uh, 15 or F in hex. And it's only this cycle in raster lines that you can do this for the sprite Y expansion. This uh, technique is explained in quite a lot of detail on uh, this web page, again, written by LFT, who also wrote this demo. And it goes into a, rather a lot of detail about uh, what values then lead to uh, what other values when you're doing this and how to calculate how to make sprites uh, shorter or actually taller. So if you uh, change the MC base MC values or cause the VIC to change those values to values which are not divisible by three, then actually you can make a sprite shorter or you can make a sprite taller because if it's not going to hit 3F as quickly as it should have, then the sprite hardware will keep on rendering sprite data. 
uh, vertically as it goes down the screen until the sprite internal MC base uh, value hits 3F and then it knows, or is it MC? Anyway, until it hits 3F, then the sprite hardware will finish rendering, right? So this means actually that for these Y expanded sprites, the demo is expecting the sprite hardware to continue drawing vertically these sprites for much longer than would have previously been possible. So normally sprites are 21 raster lines high, 21 pixels high, uh, but this demo seems to make the sprites expand all the way down from position nine, all the way down to uh, actually into the first couple of characters by the looks of it, uh, visible screen area. So that's interesting. So maybe that's what the demo is hinting at there, is, is that actually uh, the sprites that are starting at Y position 9 are meant to be considered the impossible thing because they get expanded for much more than 21 pixels. They get stretched out. Uh, they get made taller, basically. If we keep on going down, uh, we can see that MC and MC base have now looped back round to uh, values which are divisible by three. Uh, MC and MC base eventually looped round to zero, you see, and then at that raster line there, which was uh, just below the, the top border to screen transition area, then uh, MC base and MC registers for, the, for those. Uh, now they are uh, not expanded sprites, but they're basically stretched out those sprites, they will eventually trigger their, their sprite completion test because MC and MC base are now at 3F. So maybe that's what the demo means uh, with regards to 9, is that those sprites, they start at raster line, nine, raster position 9 or Y position 9, and they seem to stretch out for quite a long way. Uh, that's, that's quite a good, um, even though the technique is called sprite crunch, um, you're actually making the MC and MC base values disconnect from, from what their reality should be <laughs> when they're designed in. So what we can do now uh, is that we can look for those. In the previous video, we found that there were uh, two um, horizontally X expanded sprites uh, that used multicolors to represent uh, what was it? The three numbers, I think, scrolling along in the, in the background. So those three numbers in the background. So the, the sprites which are behind uh, are generally two horizontally expanded sp multicolored sprites, but they have uh, three numbers. And those three numbers, they look like they're high resolution, but they're not. Um, they're actually uh, multicolored sprites with uh, transparent pixels and the transparent pixels then show uh, the the screen color that is uh, behind those sprites uh, masked out with the uh, ghost bite. The ghost bite would show the color black, which matches one of the sprite multicolor values of black, uh, but it basically makes it look like the transparent pixels are higher resolution because the ghost bite is, is a higher resolution than the multicolor X expanded sprites. So if we fill uh, those uh, sprite definitions for the multicolored sprites and we fill it with zero in the machine code monitor, so now when we scroll through the memory, uh, we cannot, we don't see anything, we just see a blank, empty, transparent area for those multicolored sprites. Actually, we should probably uh, blank out that one as well. So let's do. Um, 6800, not 6840. There we go. Now, if we let the demo continue running now, we can see, let's go uh, to the large view. Let's move all of these windows out of the way. There we go. So if we have a look now, we can see a pattern. And this pattern comes from uh, the ghost bite. So the ghost bite uh, is displaying black and the transparent portions of the ghost bite then displaying the screen color behind. Uh, there's also some patterns in the uh, kind of like the character screen here, but 
we're not really interested in that. We're actually more interested in the patterns um, behind uh, the border. But we're looking at the area behind the border, really. So we're interested in those patterns of the ghost bite. So because this repeating pattern in the ghost bite, which repeats every eight pixels, is only really uh, displayed with uh, transparent pixels of sprites, then the transparent pixels of the horizontally expanded sprites uh, act like a window into this higher resolution um, ghost bite bit pattern, which is why the horizontally expanded bits uh, then gain the extra pixel resolution is because the, the window for the transparent pixels there show through to the pattern of the ghost bites. And the sprite definitions, they're kind of like symmetrical, right? The, the rounded corners of uh, the numbers and things like that, they, they, they are symmetrical. So if the ghost bite has a symmetrical pattern for the black pixels, then that's going to fit rather well with the, with the sprite definitions for those portions of the sprites which are transparent, which then show the ghost bite behind. Let's see if we can demonstrate exactly how much those uh, sprites are why, well, are stretched out and made taller. Let's see if we can demonstrate that by uh, finding where the, the code is that updates those sprite definitions and turning it off and then filling those uh, sprites with information or data that we control we can control. So let's go back to Vice and ICU64 for this because uh, the monitor has a, uh, a better watch store instruction. So we'll just look for a store to the sprite area, sprite data memory, which is for the, uh, the updating sprites here. So in the previous video, uh, it showed that this sprite data was being dynamically updated so yeah, this, this sprite data here was being dynamically updated. If I advance frame by frame, you can see how it updates. Uh, let's actually just run the demo a bit. There you go, you can see the sprite data animating and being updated. So we'll just do a watch store point there. Now we found uh, this piece of code here. This is a semi-unrolled loop here, if you like, with some self-modifying code which just does a whole bunch of copies into this area of memory. We're looking to turn off this code, but without disrupting the register usage too much, I don't really want to introduce any bugs or anything like that. So we'll put a jump at 8D51, which jumps over most of the routine, but maintains the, the registers. And we can see now that the sprites up in the top border are not uh, animating now that the dynamic sprite update has been removed so we can now use the edit functionality of the graphics map debug view in ICU64 to add our own pixels there we go and now if we have a look at the sprites up in the top border now and actually part of the screen area we can see just how much those Y expanded sprites which are not expanded in the Y but stretched out now because they're higher resolution now uh, we can just see how tall they really are. Ah, okay, the, the demo's gone backwards again. Okay, let's go back to the uh, to the snapshot point again. Let's restore that jump because we've just restored all of the memory by reloading the snapshot. So let's put the uh, the circumvention or the disabling jump back in there now. Let's uh, also fill uh, that sprite area with. Uh, some colors. Let's just see if we can calculate what those uh, sprite memory addresses should be. Uh, so let's start at 6780 to 6800 and that's going to fill the last few sprites. There we go. Uh, we'll just keep on going back through memory and chunks until we fill all of the sprite frames that we want. Uh, if I could always remember how many uh, bytes are used for each row of this sprites uh, graphics map view, then that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? But I seem to always forget how many. Anyway, there we go. There's there's all of the dynamic update sprites uh, filled in. 
uh, with FF, we can do that. Uh, we could also, for demonstration purposes, we could fill it with a, a more interesting, I think, repeating pattern. So we'll use 10 zero and 01 and 11, which are basically the, the three colors uh, of sprite so we can see each vertical column of the sprites which are now stretched out as high res sprites vertically. This is different to Y expansion. Y expansion doubles in the Y uh, the pixels, but when you're stretching them out by using uh, this sprite crunching technique, which makes the sprites taller by altering MC and MC base or causing the VIC to alter MC and MC base, then uh, you don't have the doubled pixels in the Y anymore. You, you have high resolution pixels in the Y axis as well as the X axis, of course. But now if we fill those multicolor sprites as well, you can see that the, that the transparent multicolor sprites uh, show the ghost bite behind. If we fill it with solid colors, then we can see that that is basically one of the uh, the sprite multicolors values and also if we paint pixels over these sprites definitions for the numbers one to nine there uh, we just fill in the pixels there we should see that the three and four uh, whatever they are uh, they change of course due to the animation rotating these sprites around uh, we can now see how the effect is built up uh, using various different sprite techniques. So we have um, two regular sprites, we have uh, two horizontally expanded mul uh, multicolor sprites which are now transparent, and we have those remaining sprites using uh, a Y uh, sprite Y crunch or sprite crunch uh, which makes them taller in the Y axis. And of course those uh, Sprite crunch sprites start at raster position 9 on the screen.